This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Renner. And today I'm in the gel factory outside of Moss when actually there are five factories. This is just one of them in an ancient little village called Gel where they make Russian porcelain, this marvelous blue and white porcelain. And I've been showing you how they make it. But if you want gold to be added to your piece of gel, then it comes to this room. And in this room, there's only one person working with gold because gold is so special and you have to know how to apply the gold. And even though the gold is so beautiful on every piece, when it's first applied, it's black. You can't even see it. So the person that's working with the gold really needs to know how to work with the gold. But in order for that black gold to become this beautiful gold color, it has to be placed into the oven a third time. In fact, these pieces of gel are only placed into the oven three times if you want to have gold. It takes three firings to really have gold on a piece. And it reminds me of what Peter wrote in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7, where he talked about our faith being more precious than gold, though it's tried in the fire. And I know that sometimes when we feel like we're being tried by fire, we're not enjoying it. But at the end of the day, Fire very often makes us stronger. It brings out all the color in our life. And when you've been through a lot of fire, you have gold in your life that other people do not have. And that's what I think about while I'm in this room, looking at this marvelous painter applied this gold and holding this piece that is so spectacular. And that is what I'm going to be talking to you about today. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Hey friends, this is Rick Renner and I've been waiting for you. How did you enjoy the introduction to today's program where we talked about gold tried in the fire? That is what I'm going to be speaking to you about today. We're told in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 29, that our God is a consuming fire. And the truth is, as you draw nearer and nearer to the Lord, His presence will begin to burn things out of your life that need to be eliminated. And you may not enjoy the fire at the moment, but later when those things are gone, you're going to be so glad that you embrace the fiery presence of God. And I want you to order my series, which is called The Fire of God in Your Life, The Benefits of Embracing God's Fiery Presence. I'm not talking about fires that the enemy sends. He sends sickness. He sends disease. He sends disaster. Those are not from God. I'm talking about the refining presence of God that comes to refine us, to try us, and to make us stronger and to make us better. That's why he sends his holy fire into our lives. And we need to learn not to resist it, but to embrace the benefits of God's fiery presence. This wonderful five-part series comes with a study guide. So please order yours by going online or by giving us a call right now. And today we're also offering you my book, which is called The Life of Blaze, 10 Simple Keys to Living on Fire for God. Maybe you started on fire, but somewhere along the way, it seems like you lost your fire. Well, how do you reach down inside yourself to rekindle those flames so you begin to become a life ablaze all over again? God wants you to be on fire to the end of your life, and you can be. You just need to know what fuels need to be injected into your inner blaze so you keep burning. And that's what this wonderful book is about. And I want you to order yours right now by going online or by giving us a call. And please, when you reach out to us, let us know how to pray for you. We're people of faith. And when you reach out to this ministry, you will really be prayed for. There's a voice waiting to receive your phone call. We're waiting for your email to show up in our inbox. 
And the moment we hear from you, we're going to agree with Jeremiah 33, 3, which says, call unto me, I'll hear you, I'll answer you, and I'll show you great and mighty things. When we know what you need in your life, we'll agree with you in faith. We'll cry out to God in faith. He'll hear us. He will answer us, and he will show you great and mighty things. But let us know how to pray for you. But today, I want us to go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4, where the Apostle Paul talks about a fiery experience that he went through in his life that made him better. And when you come to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4, Paul writes, But as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God, which tries our heart. And according to this verse, before he was put in trust with the gospel or before he launched out into his ministry, the King James Version says, first, he was allowed of God. That word allowed is such a bad translation of the Greek word dokimazo. Listen to what this word allowed, the Greek word dokimazo, really means. It means to test, to examine, to inspect, or to scrutinize it. So Paul is really testifying as we were tested, as we were examined, as we were inspected, as we were scrutinized of God. It means to determine the quality or sincerity of a thing to see if it's ready to be used. And because the object has passed the test, it can now be viewed as genuine and sincere. And this word allowed, the Greek word dokimazo, was used to illustrate the fiery test used to determine real and counterfeit coinage. And after a fiery scrutinizing test was performed, the bona fide coinage would stand up to the test and the counterfeit would fail. But fire was required to reveal what was real and what was false. But most importantly, this word allowed, the Greek word dokimazo, was used to picture the refining of metal by fire to remove its impurities. You know, if you just look at metal, it looks like it's ready to be used. But fire reveals defects. Fire reveals impurities that are hidden in the metal. And if you use the metal before the impurities are revealed, it will later show up as a fracture or a break. An entire building could come down because the metal was not refined by fire. So we're very thankful that they put metal through fire. But first, the metal was placed in a fire that burned at a certain degree of heat. Then, number two, it was placed in a fire that burned at an even higher degree. And finally, number three, it was placed in a blazing fire that burned at the highest degree of all. And this is actually where we get the phrase, would you please stop putting me through the third degree? And by using this word dokimazo, allowed, of God. Paul was literally saying, God put me through three degrees of blazing hot fire. He really put me through the third degree. But listen, three such tests were needed in order to remove from the metal all the unseen impurities that were hidden from the naked eye. From the viewpoint of the naked eye, the metal probably looked strong and ready to be used even prior to those tests. But unseen defects were resident in the metal that would have shown up later as a break, a fracture, or some kind of malfunction. Thus, before a person could be assured the metal was free of defects and ready to be used, three purifying tests at three different degrees of blazing hot fire were required. The fire was hot. The process was lengthy, but the tests were necessary in order to achieve a good product. Well, I know that you want to be a good product. The Apostle Paul had a great ministry in front of him. But before he could be launched out, he says, literally, God put me in the oven and a fire in that oven revealed things in my character that I would have never seen by myself. And we've seen that God sent him to the city of Antioch. You can read about this in Acts chapter 13, verse 1. And in Antioch, Paul was placed into a spiritual fire. He was in Antioch for eight years. You see, most people that thought, think that Paul just launched out into his ministry, but he did not. There were things in his character that needed to be revealed, flaws that needed to be eliminated, impurities that would have weakened his ministry. So God put him in Antioch where he was cooked 
as if he was in an oven. All the waste was eliminated. Excess was eliminated. All the flaws were revealed so he could see them. Finally, the impurities were removed. And when God saw his character was ready, that's when the Holy Spirit spoke and said, Now separate me, Saul and Barnabas, for the work whereunto I have called them. Paul may have been looking at the clock thinking, when will that day ever come? But God is not a clock watcher and he's not watching the clock for you either. Then what is God watching? He's watching your character. My friends, why would God watch the clock? He has lots of time. He can wait as long as is needed. God is looking at your character to see if your character is ready for what he's called you to do. And the moment he sees your character has come up to the level that is required, that's when he says, hey, the door is open. Your golden moment has finally arrived. Launch out. He's waiting for your character. So you need to look at your character and say, Lord, if you put me in this fire, to reveal things in my character that need to be changed. Please open my eyes so I see those defects and please burn them out of my life. But when you look at 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 4, Paul says we were allowed of God, which lets us know this was not a fire sent from the devil. This was of God. The word of is the Greek word hupo, which means by directly by, it can be translated under as under the guidance of, which means God was directing and guiding this entire event before Paul could be put in trust with the gospel. Then he says, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God. In other words, we passed the test. And then he adds, which trieth our hearts, <laughs> which means these tests never end. The word trieth is the continuous form of the Greek word dokimazo. And the verse really means this. It was a lengthy process, and I went through a lot of refining fires to finally get me to this place. I finally passed the test, and God saw that I was genuinely ready. But it's not over yet, because God is still testing our hearts to see if we're ready for the next big step. God prepares you for every step. And I've learned through the years, the bigger the assignment, the longer the period of preparation. But Hebrews 12 verse 29 says, for our God is a consuming fire. What does that mean? The word consuming is a compound of two words. The preposition kata, which is an intensifier, it describes a downward motion. The second word is analisco. The word analisco describes something that you annihilate, to consume, to destroy, or to devour. But when you compound the two words together, it forms the Greek word kata analisco, which means to consume from the top all the way to the bottom, to consume utterly, to devour completely, or to devour wholly. And here we find that God's fiery presence comes to burn defects out of our life. You see, this is not a fire sent to hurt us. It's a fire sent to refine us, to make us better. And I'm going to tell you about two experiences to make the point. First, we've already seen that the Apostle Paul was sent to Antioch. And in Antioch, he sat in the oven for eight long years. He must have wondered if those years would ever end. Finally, they ended when his character had come up to the level that it needed to be. I, get, I want to tell you about my own personal experience when I began in the ministry as a young man. I was involved in a local church at a university where I really believed that my gifts outshined everybody else. And I went to the leadership of the church and said, hey, you need to understand who I am. I'm such a gift to you. I was studying the Greek New Testament. I was smart. I knew that. And I really thought everybody needed me. So I told them, please give me a place of ministry. And they finally gave me one. They told me I could vacuum the carpet, set up the chairs, and wash the dishes. Uh, I was so offended that they would ask someone as gifted as me to wash dishes, to vacuum carpet, and to set up the chairs, and it seemed that that period lasted forever. But God was putting me in the oven to prepare me for my future. While I was setting up those chairs and grumbling, while I was vacuuming that carpet and complaining, washing those dishes, wondering why I wasn't in the pulpit. God was revealing in me that I wanted to be served rather than serve. I wanted to shine before it was time for me to shine. And God really used that period to burn some defects out of my character. But wait, wait, wait. Listen again to what 
1 Thessalonians 2 verse 4 really means. It was a lengthy process and I went through a lot of refining fires to get me to this place. But I finally passed the test and God saw that I was genuinely ready, but it's not over yet. Now listen to this part. Because God is still testing our hearts to see if we are ready for the next big step. After the university, I moved to another state where I joined the staff of a great big denominational church. And in that big denominational church, I became the associate to the pastor. I was his assistant. And oh, I was so thrilled for this position. It seemed like such a massive door had opened for me and indeed it had. But I didn't understand that I'd also stepped into the fire because that would be the fiery, most fiery experience I'd ever had in my life until that moment. God himself put me into the oven under a very strong spiritual leader who required of me things that nobody had ever required of me. My gifts were shining. My part of the church was growing. In fact, People were talking about how the whole church was growing, but the truth was the whole church was growing because my part of the church was growing. And I was so proud of me. And the pastor saw pride in my life. And he would say to me, Rick, you're doing such a great job. You know, my car needs to be washed. And he would hand me his keys. He would say, would you please go wash my car? And by the way, when you're finished washing it, I want you to really buff it so it shines. And while you're there, would you please vacuum the interior? I remember thinking, oh, great, here we go with the carpet again. Then he would say, while you're out, I want you to take a couple pairs of my shoes over to the shoe shop and have my shoes shined. Finally, I'd come back to his house. I'd bring the car, all vacuumed, washed, buffed, shining shoes. And he would say, oh, Rick, thank you so much. You know, there's a lot of leaves in my yard that need to be raked, and I don't have time to do it. Would you please do me a favor and go over to my house and rake all the leaves? I remember looking at him thinking, what in the world are you talking about? God has sent me to be a blessing to you, and you're asking me to use my anointing on raking leaves? But I'd go to his house, I'd get that rake in his enormous yard that was covered with trees, (laughs) and it seemed like I would rake and rake and rake forever, then I had to bag all the leaves And sometimes it seemed that this just went day after day after day. And not only that, he saw a lack of discipline in my life. So he required me to meet him every morning at 5.30 a.m. And Denise and I had just gotten married. I wanted to be at home with Denise, not having coffee with the pastor at 5.30 a.m. But he said, Rick, you need discipline in your life. And if I came to that meeting one minute late, I am not kidding you. When I walked in the door, he would be looking at his clock. And by the time I would get to his table, he would say, now tell me why you couldn't be here on time. He would deal with me about not being on time. Then he assigned somebody to help me learn how to manage my finances. It seemed like that pastor had his finger in every single part of my life. It was such a fire, but it was a fire that I really needed because it revealed I had a lack of discipline. It revealed that I had an issue of pride and I had an issue of arrogance. It revealed that I really didn't understand submission to authority. I needed to learn the lesson of submission to authority. I had to learn how to handle my finances. All of those things were necessary if I was going to move into my future. So God loved me so much. He put me into an oven and kept me there at a blazing hot temperature in order to reveal flaws, to burn them out of my life. And like a consuming fire, he burned them out from the top all the way to the bottom, completely holy, trying to burn all those impurities out of me so that finally I would be ready to launch forward into my ministry. And when I look back on my life, I see those years at the university church, which were so difficult for me, and my time with that strong pastor in that denominational church, which were very, very difficult for me, as some of the most wonderful moments of my life. I didn't enjoy the fire at the moment. But when I look back on those experiences, if I hadn't been through those experiences and embraced them, 
I would have carried forward into my life all kinds of impurities which would have later shown up as a defect or a malfunction that would have affected me, it would have affected my family, it would have negatively affected others. But God loved me and he loved you and he loved others so much that before he gave me a public position of ministry first, he put me in the oven. He put me in fire, a holy fire that was sent not to hurt me, but to refine me and to make me better. And maybe you feel that right now you are in such a fire. Well, if it's been sent to destroy you, it's not from God. If it's a fire that God has orchestrated to refine you, to make you stronger, and to make you better, then you need to embrace all the benefits of God's fiery presence because God is trying to prepare you for your future. I'll be back in just a moment, and I'm going to pray for you. Many people fear fiery experiences, but there is a good fire that we all need to keep burning in our lives. Fire sent from the enemy is destructive, but God sent fire is needed to make us stronger, pure, and ready for what God wants to do in and through our lives. Remember, the Bible says God is a consuming fire, and we need His fire to remain spiritually ablaze and burn red hot as we do our part to fulfill His great plan. In this life-transforming five-part series, Rick will show you how God's divine fire is needed to remove excess waste and make you stronger, reveal flaws that need to be corrected, make your life shine brighter, bring color to your life. This series is available in digital or physical format starting at just $10. In addition to this teaching series, we encourage you to get the book of Life Ablaze. In this powerful book, Rick lays out everything you need to live an intimate and uncompromising life and to stay on fire with the Holy Spirit's power for years to come. You can do it, but you need to know how. And that's what you'll discover in this timely book. Learn the right fuels you need to throw into your spiritual fire to get you burning again. Order your copy of A Life Ablaze today for only $18. Don't miss this special offer, the series The Fire of God in Your Life, and the book A Life Ablaze. Call the number on your screen or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. My friend, I want to tell you something exciting. You know, over three decades that my family and I have lived in the former Soviet Union, God has opened a lot of effectual doors for the Word of God and for the ministry. But recently, a door opened unlike any other door, and we're walking through it. Several years ago, we became the owners of a new satellite network that is called GNC, the Good News Channel. And it broadcasts around the world 24 hours a day, seven days a week into 83 nations of the world. But now we have received remarkably a license from the Russian government, the first Christian organization to ever receive this license that gives us the ability to take the signal of our network into every home in Russia. My friends, that's an effectually great open door and God is telling us to walk through it. And for us to walk through this new opening, it's gonna take a lot of money. And today I'm asking you to pray with us maybe about becoming part of the giving team so that we'll be empowered to walk through this open door and take the teaching of the Bible into every home in Russia where people are sitting, looking for answers, crying out, saying, God, what am I supposed to do with my life? And suddenly a light will penetrate their darkness through GNC, our network, and you can be a part of that. If you're already a part of our giving team, thank you. But if you'd like to be a part of this giving team, we invite you to join us. We need you. And people are crying out for answers. And together, we and you working together, we can really make a difference in somebody else's life. Today, I've been talking about the fiery presence of God and how I'm personally so thankful for all the fires that God has put me through that have been sent to refine me and to make me better. I resist fires that have come to destroy. You should resist bankruptcy, resist sickness, resist disease. Those are negative. Those don't come from God. But sometimes 
God, who is a consuming fire, sends his holy fire into our life to burn flaws and imperfections out of us to get us ready for the next phase. And when God sends his holy fire, it is to be embraced God is a consuming fire, and the closer we draw to Him, His presence begins to burn those impurities out of our life. I want you to order the whole series, which is called The Fire of God in Your Life, The Benefits of Embracing God's Fiery Presence. And it comes with a wonderful study guide so you can read everything that is in the series while you're seeing it or while you are hearing it. And we're offering you today my book, which is called A Life ablaze. Are you on fire with the Spirit? You should be. Did you lose it somewhere along the way? How do you rekindle the fire of God in your heart? That's what this book is about. It's about the 10 essential fuels you need to inject into your spiritual flame so that you are a life ablaze for the rest of your life. But you can order all these things by going online or by giving us a call right now. And please, please let us know how to pray for you. And I'm going to pray for you now. Father, I thank you that you really are a consuming fire. Help us to embrace heaven-sent fires, which come to refine us, to purify us, to make us stronger, and to make us better. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow, it's been so good to be with you today. Hey, before I close, remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, which says, where the word of a king is, there is power. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children under the third and the fourth generations of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do so any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries.